So today we're going to talk about the reversible adiabatic compression or expansion of an ideal gas. So we can start out by writing the internal energy change, which is just equal to the work because there is no heat flow. Uh, and there is no heat flow because we're talking about an adiabatic process. And we can also relate the change in internal energy to the change in the temperature uh, through the heat capacity because we're talking about an ideal gas. So we can talk about incremental changes in these quantities and we can basically write the incremental change in internal energy is equal to the incremental change in work which is related to the incremental change in temperature through the heat capacity. And because we are doing this process reversibly, we can say that the internal pressure of the gas is always equal to the external pressure at each step of the compression. And we can use the ideal gas law to express the incremental change in work to state variables. Now, we can use these two equivalent statements of the first law uh, and rearrange them so that we have only uh, changes in temperature on the left hand side and only changes in volume on the right hand side. So now on the left hand side uh, where we have to integrate from T initial to T final has to be equal to the right hand side where we're integrating from V initial to V final. And these integrals have a familiar form, and we see that these give us logarithms of t final over t initial on the left hand side and v final over v initial on the right hand side. And the important thing is now we have a relation between the temperature change and the volume change during this reversible process. So we can actually uh, rewrite. Uh, this equation without the gas constant using a relationship between the uh, constant volume and constant pressure heat capacities. And for reasons which will hopefully soon become clear, I'm going to divide both sides by the constant volume heat capacity. Now what I can do is I can exponentiate both sides to get rid of these logarithms. And when I do that, I just end up with ratios of temperature final over temperature initial, which is equal to volume final over V initial, all raised to this exponent, which has got uh, the heat capacities in it. And this is actually a useful relationship that I can use if I know um, some, but not all of the state variables. And so now you can actually divide, uh, derive further relationships using the ideal gas law, so substitute, um, for example, temperature uh, with pressure. And so go ahead and test yourself and see if you can derive the expression at the bottom right hand corner by using the ideal gas law with the expression we derived relating the temperature to the volume. 